Welcome to devlog number 4 for Towercraft, a roguelike tower defense game where you build the map and craft custom towers. This video covers days 11 to 13, which was mainly reworking the tower's stats and AI, and it was also adding some new artilleries. In the previous devlog, I covered days 8 to 10, where I created the towers. I made them placeable, gave them the ability to aim and shoot, and started work on the different turret types. I started day 11 off with completely refactoring how turrets responded. If you remember from the last devlog, I originally just had all different artillery spots permanently there and turned them on or off depending on the turret formation that was chosen. Now I did this out of convenience, but obviously this was a massive waste of memory. I refactored it so that every time the turret or artillery changed, the entire thing would respawn. After spawning in, every artillery spot that wasn't needed just deleted itself. I spent the rest of the stream adding a new artillery, the boulder. Unlike the arrow, the boulder has no homing. Instead, it's fired at a point on the ground and deals damage to all enemies in the area once it lands. Because it moves relatively slowly, the shot needs to be led. So instead of aiming at the enemy, it will aim where the enemy will be once the shot lands. Now this is a lot easier said than done but I tried. So using the enemy's speed and direction and the enemy's distance from the tower, I tried to make it predict where the enemy was going to be when the shot landed. The arc of the boulder was done by just changing the Y position of the actual mesh, depending on how far along the projectile was. The entire projectile is just heading straight towards the destination, but the mesh is also moving up and down. The effect is quite convincing, to be honest, and because I do it this way, instead of using physics, uh, projectile speed will make it animate faster instead of just shooting off into space. I realized that I needed a way to store the info of the different artilleries, and honestly all items. Name, price, rarity, damage, fire rate, etc. This info is needed by the actual artillery, by the tower, by any menus or pop-up tooltips, and, and probably a lot more that I just can't think of right now. I decided to create an artillery class and then make a resource for each artillery item. A resource in Godot is basically a script that is used to store data through export variables. Doing this made it extremely easy to access and change the data that I needed. So with that refactor out of the way, it was time to get back to work on the actual artilleries. The ballista, which was the next artillery I wanted to add, required smart aiming, very similar to the boulder. And I call it smart aiming, it's lead aiming, leading the shot. I realized that it would be better to put the smart aiming code in the tower instead of in the actual projectile. This has two main benefits. One, I won't have to rewrite the smart aiming code every time I make a new artillery. I would just need to tell the tower whether or not smart aiming is required. The artillery won't know either way. Two, it'll look better since the tower will be aiming where the projectile actually goes instead of aiming at the enemies directly and then the projectile redirecting once it comes out. This was a massive pain. After six hours and a significant amount of help from chat, we got it working quite well, to be honest. I'm not going to get into how it works because I'm not able to explain it, but I followed this stack overflow pretty much verbatim and the link is in the description it was finally time to implement the ballista the idea with the ballista is that it shoots a large spear in a straight line the spear can pierce enemies but rapidly slows down after the first enemy is hit i added some very satisfying spear sounds i made it so it kept going a bit farther after hitting an enemy to give it some piercing damage and then we were done. It literally took like 35 minutes to do, and it turned out wonderfully, if I do say so myself. Day 13. Oh my lord, day 13. This is the day I went the longest stretch of time I have ever gone without testing my code in my entire life. I decided I should do some foundation items, since I didn't want to make too many artillery items without having at least a couple of each item type first. I realized that to implement foundations, I'd need to make it so equipping items affected the tower's stats. On its face, that doesn't sound too crazy, but the more I got into it, the more I realized just how many parts of my game this affected. It took literally three and a half hours of straight coding to get to the point of being able to actually run the game again. After another hour or so of debugging, 
the stat system was fully implemented and working. Towers now have six stats. All tower stats are now stored in the tower, instead of spread between the tower, foundation, turret, and artillery. This is a big deal because it makes things so much simpler in the long run. To calculate a tower's damage stat, for example, um, you take all of the items equipped to the tower and multiply all of the damage multipliers together. So with this system in place, it was very easy to create some foundations. I made basic, heavy, and rapid foundation items. The basic foundation has all one times multipliers, so it doesn't affect any stats at all. The heavy foundation deals more damage, fires farther, and has a bigger projectile size, but has a slower fire rate, projectile speed, and turn speed. And finally, the rapid foundation is basically the exact opposite of the heavy foundation. This massive update lays the groundwork for a robust item system that I'm hopefully able to balance. That's it for devlog number four. With the stats and AI out of the way, creating the artilleries and the rest of the tower items should be smooth sailing. Like and comment for the algorithm and subscribe if you wanna see more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.